In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the basic controls for editing audio inside of Audacity. This is not going to be the super advanced stuff that you may often see in audio software, but this will at least get you started a little bit. So if you've watched the previous videos, you've seen that we did both a general voiceover recording, but also too, we then went externally to pixabay.com and we pulled in some music. So as it is right now, I could hit play and my audio project will begin. As I'm lecturing here, you can see that as, as I'm lecturing. Now, I'm going to use the magnifier real quick because this can be a little hard to see up here. So I'm going to magnify and coming up here, some of the big tools you might be working with just starting out here is first off the selection tool, which is used to make selections on the waves here. So for instance, if I just click and drag, you can see how I have this in and out point as far as the audio is concerned. I can also just click away and it'll also move that audio selection as far as that goes. So also a side note here, I do want to emphasize to folks that selecting and using the selection tool on the actual audio files so let me bump that back up there, is very different from working and using the selection tool on what we call the timeline up here. If we do that on the timeline, it's actually going to make a looping area. So just to demonstrate, you see the if I click and drag, you see how I'm getting that little in and out point there? That's defined a looping region. That has not done anything regarding the selection of your audio. So notice you can see kind of the coloring here outside of the main, the opening loop area. If you need to get rid of this or you accidentally do this where you clicked on the timeline, you can right click and there is a clear loop option. That'll just get rid of that for you. But to come back to talking a little bit more about the selection tool, it is just that. It will let you select specific areas that if you wanted to delete or if you wanted to split the clips, you can do so. This becomes a lot more important if, let's say, uh, you have dead air or whenever you're starting out a recording. This may be often the reason why we'll have silence at the start and at the end of audio clips just so we are able to clean up and figure out you know do we need that dead air uh, as far as starting up if we have a fade in things like that now just to differentiate real quickly here so you're working with that selection tool i do want to show you here like for instance let's say i decide i don't need the end of this chat clip for whatever you do have, just so you're aware, you have buttons over here, but to emphasize, if I say mute, these don't really tie into the general tool sets you're working with. You see how it actually muted the entire audio here. So just be careful whenever you're working with that. Now, editing the clips themselves as far as selections go. A lot of times I'll see folks right out of the gate say, okay, I don't need this part, so I'm gonna hit the delete key and it's gone. This can get a little bit dangerous because if you notice, you see how I have now this kind of bracket with the two arrows? That's to extend or hide as far as the edges of the audio clip go. So I'm gonna do Control Z to just undo and step back so I get that back. If you're looking at a selection and saying, I actually don't need this end part here, you may want to instead just hover on the edge with the selection and come in and edit the audio that way. It's non-destructive, that audio piece will still be there and it can just be a little bit more helpful on that front. I'm gonna go ahead and control Z just to kind of bring it back out there. The other option though is if you select a piece of the audio and you right click on that selection, this is where you can split your clips. When you click that, notice what has happened. It's now made a brand new audio clip out of the two clips. So you have the first, the second, and the third. 
couple of things I can do with this. I can now reposition by clicking on the title bar here. I could reorganize the text. Uh, if you've ever seen in age-old videos uh, and movies and stuff where they're making those voice recognitions and they're digging into the audio and rearranging the words, this is an example of how they would do it. Uh, I can also, as well, I can now specifically come in and select the clips here. Notice it will still go through and set as far as the overall strand of the audio, but I could also now even come in further, edit this a little bit more, make it even smaller, but maybe I have specific words that I want to sync up with down here with the actual music, another way of doing that. So you can do the same thing here with audio. So what I'm going to do is let me zoom back out here with the magnifier. Let's go ahead here. Now, if you ever need to, you do have that zoom in and zoom out control. There are times where you're going to want to zoom in so far, so I'm still zooming and zooming here, where we can really do fine selections of audio. If you're working across a long audio recording, at the very bottom of Audacity, you have the horizontal slider here. So you can see I can slide all the way back through. I wouldn't advise working in this workflow like this zoomed in all the time, only whenever you need to go in and truly do nitty gritty editing. So I'll go ahead here. I'm going to actually zoom back out a little bit more so we can see what's happening. There we go. That's pretty good. Now, seeing how I have the audio set up, and if I go ahead here, I'll kind of mess around with this a little bit. There we go. Already you can see the Better Days audio way too long. We do not need all of this audio. So what I might actually do here is I may come down and select this and instead we'll maybe do the out. And I'm going to use that selection tool again, kind of resync this up here. All right, so let me zoom in again using the magnifier so folks can see. And this was the other big tool I wanted to talk to you about, is right next to that, it's called the envelope tool. You do have the opportunity as far as the decibel levels with the audio piece itself that I could take the decibel overall just completely down across the board. However, what's nice about working with the envelope tool is it will come in and I can actually tweak as far as fade in and fade out. So when I switch over to the envelope tool or F2, you can see how I start to get kind of these upper and bottom bars. Now, because I'm working in stereo, whatever I do to one audio wave, it's going to do it to the other. So coming up to this top bar here, I'm actually gonna start by pulling this down a little bit. It's just too loud out of the gate. You also have these sub bars here that you can work with. But then what I can begin to do here is I can click on other areas to add additional points to the envelope. So now I can start working on getting kind of that nice fade in on the audio and all I'm doing is clicking and you see it's hard to see just because it's like light yellow on yellow here but I can go through and I can keep adding points to kind of fade out the audio there so that's just a really simple way that you can add some effect to your audio pieces there where maybe you want to have music play in but then do a quick fade out. Using the envelope is a great option for doing that when you're just getting started. It's also a very simple tool. I also like starting with it when I start out with audio with students just because it's so visual. You actually see the result versus, for example, okay, I need to change the decibel level, so I'm just gonna click on the scrubber back and forth as far as the gain of 
how loud or how soft I want the overall audio to be. So once you've gone through this process, you're now ready listen, preview your audio, but then you're ready once again, as a reminder, you can save your project. So you have all of this working elements if you need to come back and work on it, but then you're ready to export your audio. So you could do wave. Uh, normally I just go straight to MP3 and you're ready to export your project and it'll send it directly to that folder that you've been working in regarding the Audacity project. But even just with these few basic tools, as far as selection, envelope, and zooming, as you can see, you can get a ton done with basic audio editing.